Hi, this is Brian with episode 17 of the Tie-Dye Farmer video blog. Today is a follow-up to something that we started a few days ago and I talked about the dehydration process of our shiitake mushrooms. Now that we got them in a jar and dry, today I'm going to be vacuum packing them. And what I'm using today is something that can be commercially bought, bought called a vacuum canner. I actually built this device many years ago. Uh, for people that don't know, my background is theater and technical production. So sound, light, video, scenery. This design was based upon something called a pressure pot. We would use this if we were doing castings of silicone to make molds. You needed to pull all the gas bubbles out of the silicone. So we would use something called a pressure pot. And after many attempts at using this device, which is a vacuum lid for canning jars, and it's for a food saver vacuum, I got really frustrated and decided to build this unit. It's simply a Presto uh, pressure canner, and we have retrofitted it with a bunch of fittings and valves and a vacuum gauge to act as a vacuum canister. So one of the cool things for anybody who is interested in this, I will put a link below in the notes. There are several videos I found on YouTube that talk about building this. I will also put a link to the vacuum canner website where you can buy one. I don't know that I would recommend this as a project for the novice. You are dealing with pressures, even though they're negative, this could be dangerous if done improperly. Fortunately, I have a full machine shop here, so between mills and lathes and plenty of taps and dies, this was an easy project for me. Okay, so now that we got the dried shiitake product, I'm going to put it into our vacuum canner or vacuum canister. And one of the things you'll notice is there's some scribbles on the lids. That's because you can reuse these lids. As uh, long as you don't bend them or break the seal, they can be reused many times for vacuum packing. I'm gonna spin the ring on, back it off a quarter turn, place it into the canister. I have a whole bunch of other stuff in here, which are some herbs that we foraged and dehydrated from the property. Then I need to put the lid on, turn it so it's tight, we need to close the valve and turn on a vacuum pump. And wait, and wait, and wait, and wait until the gauge makes it all the way around. Okay, we've achieved vacuum. To get these lids to seal, all we need to do is release pressure into the canister. And simply all we're doing is opening the valve that's gonna leave some air rush in and it's going to push the lids down on top of the jars. And now we have an extremely strong vacuum. Uh, want to look up the details on how strong this is compared to the food saver. I did that when I first built the unit. Significantly stronger than a food saver vacuum. This unit here is a vacuum pump. It's typically used in the AC and automotive industry, that being air conditioning and HVAC type units. They use these for pulling out HVAC uh, fluids, I believe but the strength of the vacuum on this is substantially stronger than what you're going to get in a standard run-of-the-mill food saver. And that gets back to one of those things I've talked about before. 
get the best tool you can. We started with food savers. I think we went through three of them before we finally decided to buy a commercial unit, which probably would have cost about the same as those first three food savers. So it really is advantageous. Anyway, you can take the rings off at this point, or you can leave them on if you really feel like you might knock this lid off, but it isn't anything that you need to worry about. The amount of oxygen that is in this is so low because of the strength of this vacuum. Things in here last almost indefinitely. I can't say how long because nothing ever seems to last that long. We make good food and we store good food. So we typically go about eating it. I know that we've done, I think I have garlic that we shaved and dehydrated from three years ago. We did lose our garlic seed several years ago, so we're still using garlic, and it tastes just as good as the day it went in. I know we've also done dehydrated apples two years ago, and it was another one of the deals, same thing, came from the same place the mushrooms did. Uh, got a phenomenal deal. I think we bought five cases of uh, Granny Smith apples, and uh, I wanna say that we might have spent $5 a, a case on them. We ended up with gallons. I mean, I at least two cases of these half gallon jars filled with dehydrated apples. And we're still using them. They taste just as fresh as the day they went in. So I'll put a link in the, the show notes here, uh, take you to the vacuum canner site. They'll also take you, put another link there that will take you to a YouTube video about a guy building one of these. I'm sure I could do it, but since the video is already there, I'm not gonna waste my time. I'll let you guys take a look at somebody else and I can get onto some other stuff. It's been great doing this. I love participating in this community of homesteading and sharing my experiences. It's been, it's been a great thing because it keeps me accountable. It keeps me wanting to do something new every day. Anyway, thanks for joining me on the Tie-Dye Farmer video blog. This is Brian. Have a wonderful one.